Right, Brexit is getting very interesting now. Uh, but before we start, I have to say that it's absolutely freezing here. That's why I'm wearing my jacket. But don't worry, I still got my vote leave shirt. So hopefully that should be fine. Uh, but basically, the, the last couple of days have been quite interesting. The, y yesterday, Boris Johnson announced his new proposal to have a better deal with the European Union. I made a video. I said that I still want a new deal Brexit because that's better for the UK. Uh, but at the same time, I objectively explained that the differences between Boris Johnson's Brexit deal and Theresa May's. And some people in the comment section said that apparently I'm a sellout. And I don't know what happened, but to clarify, I still want no deal Brexit. Uh, now, going back to what happened today. This morning, the, uh, the Scottish High Court, again, uh, uh, did a session to essentially forced the Boris Johnson's government to make sure that they do ask for an extension by the 19th of October if there is no Brexit deal. And uh, the way the headlines work in the mainstream media, uh, because the government basically came out and said that, yes, fine, we'll ask for an extension. The way the headlines showed, everybody freaked out. Everyone's very worried. Are they, they say, first, Boris Johnson said that he wants a deal. And now he says that he wants to give us a Brexit delay. Nothing's changed. Now, we're going to explain what's actually happening towards the end of the video, so make sure you keep watching it. But let's go over the actual events. So firstly, Joanna Cherry of the SNP and her other Remainer friends came out again to have this court session to make sure that uh, Boris Johnson doesn't break any rules and he does actually ask for a delay. And Boris Johnson came out and said, fine, let's do it. But he didn't actually clarify what he meant by that. That's why all the Remainers are uh, on TV today saying that uh, we're not sure if he's actually going to obey the law or not. Meanwhile, in Downing Street, uh, they have received a document on no deal, on how to deliver no deal uh, to make sure that it doesn't actually have a big negative impact economically. There is a Brexit action plan. Boris Johnson has been handed a no deal report revealing that UK can manage exit without a deal. With Boris Johnson warning uh, the EU that the only alternative to his latest Brexit suggestions is no deal, the Prime Minister has been offered a blueprint setting out how disruptions can be kept uh, to a minimum if no agreement can be struck. This document is made by uh, Open Europe, which uh, also one of the analysts, uh, Dominic Walsh, has said that the EU seems unlikely to accept the UK's latest compromise offer for a deal. Now, we're going to go over a couple of other things that's happened today, yesterday and today to then get to the end of this analysis to kind of show you uh, what the what we think the plan is uh, from Downing Street. The next news that came out is from Hungary. Uh, basically, uh, as a country, they have now uh, given a massive warning to the European Union because of the way the EU have treated the UK when it comes to uh, Brexit. The Hungarian foreign minister has said that he's really fed up with Europe's approach to Brexit and has warned Brussels to stop diminishing the importance of the UK exiting the bloc. Now, that one is very important coming from Hungary and you'll see why. Next is Arlene Foster of the DUP. The DUP's Arlene Foster has uh, issued a massive warning to the European Union after they've said that they're not fully convinced by Boris Johnson's new proposal. The DUP have clarified to the European Union that if they say no to this deal, this is the final offer. Now, you may ask why all of these are actually related to uh, the development of Brexit, especially for the next few weeks. Now, f first, we have to go back to yesterday and when Boris Johnson, actually it was Wednesday, when Boris Johnson announced his new proposal to the European Union when it comes to Brexit. And uh, the European Union are not fully happy, which means the first step uh, to get this actually done, the EU have to accept it then uh, they have to come back to the UK Parliament and the UK Parliament have to vote for that, which is also a, a different obstacle for uh, soft Brexiteers or the ones that just want to leave with a deal. Now, Boris Johnson has uh, proposed a set of new ideas that are shifting the power from the European Union to the UK uh, because the Theresa May deal obviously uh, gave, a, gave a lot of uh, uh, decision-making uh, powers to the EU and the Commission and the ECJ uh, but Boris Johnson, for example, he's clarified that he wants to 
take back control of our fisheries and our waters that will be completely free which is quite controversial for the eu because they wanted to have this at least for a few years uh, he's also said that any defense or armed forces um, uh, union that's going to be created by the eu that's completely going to be out as well that's all going to be cancelled and this is another problem boris johnson has scrapped a Theresa may promise to the eu that britain will abide by a level playing field standards after brexit and that goes back to trade because there's a difference between free trade uh, between two countries which usually is based on mutual recognition of uh, goods and services which means you could have your normal ordinary chicken uh, and you could at the same time have coronated chicken coming from America as long as you market properly and people know the different brandings uh, whereas when it comes to trade blocks uh, well protectionist blocks like the European Union they don't do that. They harmonize standards. They, you have to play by their rules. Even a new country joining the European Union have to change all their standards and all their regulations to abide by the EU law. Now we go back to the strategy of Downing Street. According to my sources that I've been speaking to since yesterday, a couple of sources that are uh, linked to the UK government and Boris Johnson, essentially there are a number of ways that are trying to essentially frustrate the whole situation. One, this new proposal that a lot of you have been freaking out because you think that's what's going to happen is, is making, actually making things difficult for the EU because uh, they're not going to just easily say yes to that. Secondly, it goes back to the extension. Yes, Boris Johnson said that to, to the court today that fine, we're not going to break any rules. That doesn't mean that we're actually going to get a delay. And this is how. This is a document from the court that essentially confirmed that Boris Johnson has to send a letter to the EU Council uh, to ask for an extension if there is no deal by the 19th of October. Now, if you look at the paragraph B, where it talks about uh, in the event that the European Council decides to agree to any extension for the period specified in the letter, He's obliged to uh, immediately to notify the president of the European Council that the United Kingdom agrees to that extension, section three. Now, that's the most important part in that paragraph for the period specified in the letter. Now, there are a lot of uh, loopholes that have been uh, suggested when it comes to the, the Ben uh, bill and uh, the Boris Johnson's government being forced to ask for his extension. One loophole is to send two letters, one to seek the extension, ask for one, and the second one immediately afterwards to withdraw. Uh, this one is actually more interesting because it basically says that when Boris Johnson sends a letter, he has the power to put the, the specified uh, the, the actual date. So he could just say, can we please have an extension for five minutes and we'll promise to get back to you. So that's another thing that is going to be a potential way out. Now, I've been looking on Twitter all day to kind of see the developments and there are a lot of... Uh, Actually, we have a, uh, well, not a breaking news, but the latest uh, intel from Laura Kunzberg uh, that uh, she has spoken to a senior number 10 source uh, who still claims that uh, we can <coughs> avoid the delay. The source has told Laura Kunzberg that the government will comply with the Ben Act, which only imposes a very specific narrow duty concerning Parliament's letter requesting a delay. So that also means that Downing Street are essentially planning for a no deal anyway. And uh, don't be surprised, again, this, we don't actually have evidence for this, so this is speculation, uh, so we don't want to get into the whole conspiracy theories route. But there are a lot of uh, <clears throat> theories going out there saying that uh, the, the whole point of Parliament being very quiet over the last few days, because they've been, they wanted to cancel prorogation of Parliament to come back, to completely com uh, be combative and uh, stop Boris Johnson's Brexit plan, uh, but the reason they've been quiet is because uh, the government have been very soft, saying, oh, don't worry, we're going to come up with a very, very good soft deal and just wait for us and we're going to present it to you. Uh, so that's why uh, they've been quite calm. So the theory is that uh, Boris Johnson has been buying some time for himself by uh, discussing this new deal and everything. And uh, he actually expects it to uh, be rejected by the European Union anyway. And even if not, then he will he'll be rejected by Parliament. And uh, then it comes to the 19th of October and he has to do something about that delay. And this is why earlier on we were talking about Hungary 
and also the DUP sending warnings to uh, the EU. The, these are quite important. Uh, one of the sources that I have has said that don't be surprised without confirming. Don't be surprised if there will be at least one or two European countries that will um, send a signal that we would veto the extension even before that meeting. Now, another jokey suggestion by Guido Fawkes is this. Guido has said that the letter could say, Dear EU, I'm obliged to ask for an extension which I don't really want. Even if an extension is granted, we're not going to pay any more money to the EU, so we'll be staying for free. We'll also be sending Dominic Cummings personally to all the meetings, and you know what it's like. Regards, Boris. Now, personally, I would love it if the letter says something like this, because that would be absolutely hilarious. But the point of this video is to tell you that uh, don't just pay attention to the headlines that you get from the mainstream media without an analysis because they just make everyone freak out, uh, including what happened today with the courts. Uh, Boris Johnson's government basically just said, we're not going to break any rules. They didn't say we are going to get the extension. There's a huge difference in that. Uh, but in other news, we were talking about the courts and the Scottish High Court again being disruptive. And uh, there is... A whole discussion that's now opening up, especially when it comes to the Supreme Court, the legit legitimacy and the whole purpose of it. And I think you all remember who Baroness Hale was, uh, the woman who chaired the Supreme Court session to essentially rule against Boris Johnson's prorogation. I think it was last night or earlier today that she went to an association of state girls school uh, where she made a speech. And in that session, she uh, made uh, jokes about Boris Johnson and his comments. And she said that, let's hear it for the girly swats as she opened her leadership conference. This is not how it's supposed to be. Uh, the whole point of the judiciary and the Supreme Court and these uh, massive, respected, incredible judges that we have, they are supposed to be impartial, unbiased and professional. And the, the way people like Baroness Hell and uh, others on that panel have been uh, acting and behaving is quite astonishing because uh, it, 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 the mask is slipping. We know what they think. It, it, they're not necessarily being completely unbiased because uh, the decision that they made against Boris Johnson's prorogation plan and things like this, when Baroness Hill goes to a, a conference and decides to express personal opinion towards uh, Prime Minister, someone that she essentially has to kind of work with closely at times because of uh, the relationship between our uh, the judiciary and uh, the executive. Really? Are you kidding me? But it's okay, because the Romanians are underestimating Brexiteers power. They have Lord Adonis, we have Dominic Cummings. They are playing Connect Four. Dominic Cummings is playing 4D chess. So that's the current situation. But before we finish, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's been in touch with me regarding our merchandise, the Brexit t-shirts and uh, phone cases. We now have uh, added the uh, Brexit hats, kind of like MAGA hats. If you want to check it out, the link is in the description. For the ones that you have, uh, the ones that have received the merchandise, the t-shirts and everything and the mugs, uh, make sure you take a picture with uh, whatever you've got now from our merchandise and uh, send it to me. I'll put the email address down here. Uh, email them to me and I'll do a shout out in my next video. Uh, we have uh, obviously all the other designs as well. There are, we kind of want to have uh, new design ideas. Uh, one of you sent, ain't no Brexit like a no deal Brexit. So if you like this idea, put it in the comment section. If you have any other design ideas to put on a t-shirt, uh, put them in the comment section and we'll check them out. And as always, if you want to follow me on social media, look at my rants on Twitter, or if you want to watch the behind the scenes uh, on Instagram, you could find the link down there. And uh, don't forget to subscribe as always and click on notification right next to it. Otherwise, you won't be notified when I release a new video. Video comes out every day, 5.45 p.m. And Sundays, we have live Q&As at 8 p.m. And as always, I'm Maya Tusi, and this is the fastest growing center-right Brexit channel in the country.